Hello, in this segment, I'm going to explain the Lampert signature scheme. It's a very interesting idea. Just using the hash function, for example, SHA-256 or any other equivalent hash function, we can build a signature scheme. We don't need hard number theory problems like uh, factoring or, or uh, discrete log as underlying problems. We just need a one-way function for this signature scheme. So I'm going to show to you how the Lampert signature scheme works. So let us assume as usual, we have our uh, participants, Alice and Bob, right? Alice wants to um, send a message to Bob, okay? Let's say Alice is here and Bob is here, okay? All right, they're far apart. Alice wants to send a, <clears throat> a message to Bob. Bob needs to verify that the message actually came from Alice. Okay, so that's basically the idea of a digital signature that you want to verify whether it comes from the person who knows the private key. Okay, hopefully it's only the Al only Alice who knows the private key. So let's say um, the, the message that Alice wants to uh, send to Bob is an L bit message, M1, M2, ML, okay? This is basically an L bit binary string. Each M that you're seeing, the small M is either zero or one. So this is a message Alice wants to send to Bob. <clears throat> okay, so what she's going to do is create public and private keys. Of course, publish the public key. Uh, assume Bob can see the public key for our discussion. And uh, she's of course going to keep the parts of the private key private. She's going to expose some of the private key in this scheme, but it's an interesting scheme in the sense that she's going to only use the same private key only once. So it's like one time signature scheme, okay? So um, what are the components of the public and private keys? Let me explain that. So the private key part, let me use um, shortcut SK as a secret key, right? Uh, this is basically my secret key. Okay, now I haven't explained what the X's are. X's are random numbers, okay? Now we can assume, um, I, will, I will make a note here. Assume that your X, XIJs are just an n bit random number, okay? n could be 128, 256, something that you think is difficult for an attacker to, to exploit. Usually uh, you wanted to put n to be a large number, say for example, 256 bit, then it will be a lot of work to, for an attacker to break a hash function, okay? So each xij is basically an n bit number and you have to fix the n bit upfront, all right? So it's an n bit number, right? And uh, so far I only defined the Secret key. So what about the public key? The public key I will denote by PK is nothing but take each component of your uh, private key and compute hash function out of it, okay? So it's nothing but hash of the corresponding values, okay? X10, this is the public part. This is the private key. SK is the, the private key and the PK is the public key. So now, how is this message going to be signed? Let me explain the message signature as follows. Remember I said each MI is either a zero or one, okay? So, um, okay, each MI is zero or one. Let's assume uh, for, for our discussion purpose, um, the message is say a very simple message. Let's take the message to be zero one one, okay? What does it mean? It means, uh, she's going to send, okay, this is zero, right? First bit is zero. She's going to send this particular secret to, to Bob. So the Bob would, Bob would know uh, um, this particular value, okay? Which is a <clears throat> n-bit number. Remember, all of the matrix of S, SJ are, are n-bit numbers. So she's going to send X10 as it is to, to Bob. Okay, what is the next bit? It's one, right? One means she has to go down um, to the next row. So there are two rows, right? This, this row is only selected if the bit is zero, and this row is selected if the current bit is one, okay? So each column corresponds to one bit of the message, okay? So if the bit value is zero, you stay on the row number one, otherwise you go to row number two. Okay, that's all. So now it's one here, right? That means you'll be select second row and select the next item, okay? So Essentially, she's going to send to, to Bob 
her message, Yam, in, in clear. Okay. You can imagine Yam is already encrypted. So it's you can imagine Yam is a cipher text. That doesn't matter in this case. So Yam, if it is a con confidential message, you don't want to send it in clear, but otherwise you can assume it's encrypted. Okay. And we don't need to worry about how that will be decrypted. So Yam is a sequence of bits that she wants to sign, right? That's basically her goal. So she will send Yam. She's going to send selected subset of the of the private key parts that correspond to this, right? So in this case, she's going to send the first uh, row uh, zeroth column, okay? Because that's the zero. And then she's going to send the, the <clears throat> second row, right? Because the, the bit is one, second row and second column, because you're talking about the second bit. And then the third one is again, second row, third column because this we are talking about the third bit so she's going to send this is her signature right this is this this thing is the signature corresponding to the message m okay so she's sending the message and the signature to to bob okay so this pair is what she's going to send to bob and just to be clear what she's sending is just the message and the corresponding signature okay just to map each right each a message bit to the corresponding signature bit which is zero corresponds to this one uh, one corresponds to this one and this this one corresponds to this one okay so that's basically what he will do first he will take each bit and uh, and then he takes the corresponding signature like uh, x10 so let me explain what bob will do to verify the signature okay so bob sees x10 so he computes hash of x10 remember the first component corresponds to the first bit so he's going to compute hash of x10 and then he uses the message to figure out whether he has to compare the first row or the second row of the public key. This is public key, remember PK is public key. So he sees X, uh, he computes the hash of X10 and then he sees, okay, the first bit is zeroth bit. That means I should just compare against this one. This is the public key. So is this value equal to the, the public key value? Yeah, of course this is, this let me use H X one zero again against. Uh, let me use a, a special superscript. This is PK or our subscript. So he's going to use the PK matrix, which is publicly available. So he is going to compare. Okay, if it is equal, he's going to move to the next one uh, and next one. I mean, to prevent timing attacks, you want to do the whole thing. In any case. <clears throat> uh, this is for only one time signature, okay? So now he has done with the first bit. Now he will move to the next bit. What is the next bit? Um, of course, the next bit, uh, the private value is X22. So he will, go, he will go ahead and compute the hash of X22, right? And he's going to now compare against the public key value. So the, the second bit is saying one, that means he has to go to the second row of this matrix. So he's going to go to the public key matrix which is publicly available, you have to assume it's not tampered. And he's going to take the second row, second column, because you're talking about the second bit. And he's checking whether are these two things equal. Okay, if it is equal, he's going to continue to the next bit. So this is basically it. So one time signature uh, works as follows. Yeah, the, Alice has a message, L bit message, and uh, she will generate a two by L let me call this as a two by L matrix. Each element in a matrix is an N by N bit um, number, random number, okay? To, to sign a message, all she's going to do is, she's going to uh, pick elements from this SK matrix, okay? If the, if the uh, to, to, to sign the ith bit, she's going to take the ith column, right? And if the ith bit is zero, she will go. She will select the, the first row. Otherwise, she will select the corresponding second row. That's all. All right. And during the verification process, Bob will take the message. She, the message will help Bob whether to focus on the first row or the second row, because each bit of the message is either zero or one, of course. And uh, he will continue bit by bit, computing the hash again and compare against the publicly published values. Okay. If the values don't match, he knows something is wrong. Eve probably has tampered the message or tampered the signature. Okay. So let me do, do a quick demo of this. A little program. I don't claim it's cryptographically correct for, on all those side channel attacks, everything. 
I just wanted to show to you as a proof of concept. So what did I do? The first step, let me start from the main function, right? Um, I, I created, a, um, <clears throat> I, I am using SHA-256 in this case, and I wanted to show to you encryption, uh, to be more precise, signing of uh, message uh, m equal to three. It's okay, it's bin binary, it is zero, one, one. It's a three bit message. And I wanted to use the um, 256 bit entries for my uh, SK matrix. Um, generate key matrix, uh, um, generate key function, how it works. Remember, we need to specify the message length uh, because it's it's one time for each message. And then the bit number of bits you would like to have in your matrix for each of the elements and uh, the hash algorithm, okay? So I'm going to use SHA as the hash algorithm. So here is the, the matrix that I'm initializing, right? I'm generating a bunch of uh, N bit matrix. As you can see, I have only two rows because the each um, row, if the bit is zero, I use the first row. If bit is one, I use the second row. That's basically the reason why I only need two rows. And then I need L columns because there are L bit messages. So I'm computing. Uh, here is the place where I'm generating the SK matrix. And then I'm computing the hash for each um, value. And then I store it in the public key matrix. That's all. So this is the key generation algorithm. And how is the signing work? So, okay, let's, let's follow the main now. We did the key generation, let's sign one particular message, right? The message we want to sign is three using the uh, secret key, of course. You sign using the secret key and you verify using the public key. So let's look at the signature. So remember, as I said, um, to, to sign, we are going to look at the secret key matrix and just select those uh, rows that correspond to um, the bits, bit values. If the bit value is zero, we will be selecting the first row. The bit value is one, we will be selecting the second row. That's what exactly we're doing. So here comes the verification part, right? We parse the message as, um, as a binary sequence of bits. And then we go through each bit of the message and verified uh, the signature, okay? So let's, let's try this with an assertion enabled, no problems. Let me pretend that somebody has modified the message after it was signed. Let's say the signature has been, let's see whether it will detect it. Yeah, you see here, somebody tampered the message and uh, it failed. Let's now, Tamper the signature. Okay, let's just increase the uh, value of the signature by one. Or, or uh, it, signature itself is, is a sequence of numbers, so I can't do, do that. Let me just change the the first um, number to zero. As you can see, verify verification again fails if I mess with the signature. So, to summarize the long story short, all we did today is um, use Lampard one one time signature algorithm. Okay, let me go back to the whiteboard again. I'm going to just summarize the discussion. So Alice wants to send a message to Bob, yeah, L bit message. So what is the first thing she has to do? She has to generate two things. She has to generate the secret key matrix, which is called private key matrix. And uh, she has to generate a public key matrix. This, this is public key to be more precise. Okay, the two matrices she's going to generate at a high level first. So now let me explain the dimensions of the matrix. The dimensions of the matrix um, is two by L, okay? The reason is that we are going to do signing bit by bit, okay? A bit can be either zero or one, that means we only need two rows. And if there are L bit messages, then we would need L, L columns. That's the reason why we need two by L for both the secret and the public key matrices. Now let me explain the entries of the secret key matrix. The entries of the secret key are, are the private key matrices. Um, the, the, uh, let me be more precise. The, the entries of the, um, uh, the private key matrix are just random numbers, n bit random numbers. You can select n bit to be 256 or something, whatever security length, uh, strength you want to achieve. Okay. And uh, then the public key is basically just the hash of each of those n bits. Okay. And you publish the public key. Um, in this case, Alice publishes it. What is she going to do for signature? For signature, she parses her message. She, let's say she has an L bit message. She parses her message bit by bit. If the bit is uh, zero, she's going to stick to the uh, first row. If the bit is one, she's going to stick to the second row. And uh, each bit corresponds to one column here. So she's going to, as an example, if the message is zero, one, one, she's going to select this N bit number, okay? And then she comes down, select this N bit number, okay? And it's, that's what she's putting here. And then she's going to select the next N bit number, okay? 
That's all. So she's going to send sequence of n bit numbers to to Bob. Of course, Bob needs the the message and the sequence of n bit numbers. Bob now has to do the same. He has to take the signature and compute the hash of all the signature um, n bit numbers. So in this case, the three n bit numbers Bob has to call the hash function three times, and then Bob has to match it up against the published public key values. And uh, to match it up, he needs to know whether he has to work here, meaning the first row or the second row. And for that, he will use the message. If the message says zero, he is going to stick to the uh, first row. If the message says one, he is going to stick to the uh, second row. And uh, he is going bit by bit. So the columns will be decided bit by bit. So zero means here, this is the first column. This is the second column. And this is the third column. Remember, that's the reason why we have L, two by L matrix. Okay. If there's a mismatch uh, in the hash computation, he knows something is wrong either. Somebody tampered with any of these n bit messages or tampered with the uh, individual bits of the message. Okay. Why is this secure? It's secure with the assumption that the hash function is secure. Okay. It's difficult for somebody to tamper uh, both the message bit and the uh, signature bit, and they still have the hashes. Um, uh, um, valid so that's that's the assumption here so very 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 important thing you need to be aware of is that this this should not be done um, for multiple messages so each message must have a unique secret key public key pair okay let, let me explain why you need to be careful there suppose you're using the same key for the, uh, for encrypting another message let's say the other message is m100 okay so if you use the same key, attacker can easily take your message, right? 100 is the new message. He's going to replace that by, let's say he's tampering with this and this, and he replaces by 11, okay? Of course, if we send it like that, this is going to fail. Um, he has to now mess, mess with the corresponding signature. So he can easily do that because in the previous session, he has the data for x22, x23, which is corresponding to the bits one and one respectively. So he will be able to successfully bypass the, the validation logic by and, and go undetected because he has already gotten the, the private key from the previous messages. Okay, that's not good. So that's the reason why you want to make sure that you are using the scheme to encrypt uh, only one message at a time using only one key. So you cannot reuse the secret key and the corresponding public key more than once. Yeah, you can only do it once. Okay. That's the reason why it is one time Lampert signature scheme. Okay, one time. Very important. Thank you. That's all.